Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Annie Z with What If Deku Had The Fate Summon Quirk? We start off in the world of fate. Right now we're in the Fate Zero timeline where Hiritsugu had just killed Kirei with his special bullets causing Yogamesh to disappear. Hiritsugu proceeded to go to the Grail and ask it to save everyone. However, like in canon, the Grail never accepted this. Aris Will then tells Hiritsugu to think about their daughter's future if the war would go on if they weren't going to save her. But she was destined to become the next vessel of the Grail. So if the Grail isn't destroyed, she will be a sacrifice. Hiritsugu, seeing only one way to protect his daughter Ilya from the fate that Irisville shared, decided to ask the Grail to reincarnate itself and the throne heroes into one human in a different world to end this cycle of war. The Grail accepts as that's what it wanted to live its life as a human and see what it was like. The Grail and the throne of heroes was then reincarnated into one Izuku Midoriya. So before we continue on, I'm going to be explaining what Deku's family is like. So Deku's family is going to be a family known as heroes, like the Todorokis, and will be born with overpowered quirks. So for someone in their bloodline to be born with a weak or no quirk will cause them to either abandon or kill the child. So let's get started. We see Deku enter his first day at school, where he introduces himself as a Midoriya. This excites everyone because he has prestige next to his name. Deku also has a brother called Isusuke, Itsuki actually. We now skip to the day Izuku and Isuki goes to get himself tested for the quirk. The doctor does the test and senses high energy from Izuku but then his quirk was determined as a mere summoning quirk while Isusuki's was a fire and telekinesis hybrid quirk. This causes Inko to frown at, Mi at Izuku while looking at Itsuki like he was an angel in her eyes. They both leave and get into the car with Itsuki claiming that he's going to be the best hero because he has the strongest quirk ever and Inko was hyping him up. When Inko looked at Izuku, she had a look of disgust. Izuku, can you get out of the car and help me change the tyre? Inko says when she parked near a forest away from the city. Izuku being 4 year old and not knowing agreed as he gets out as Inko kicks and hits him. You dare silly our name with your weak and useless quirk. We decided that we're kicking you out for having such a low level quirk. We've kicked out your uncle before because he had a low level super strength quirk and you have the audacity to be born in Midoriya and have a stupid summoning quirk. She says beating him to the ground. Hey mum, Izuki says as he hears Izuku screaming out in pain. What is it honey? Can I test my quirk out on that disgrace? He should be happy that I'm going to use him as a test subject, as my first test subject, Izuki says. Yes honey, I will allow you to test your gift from God from, from the fires of hell on that failure of a brother. I mean this fa failure of a stranger, because he's not part of our family, Inka says. As Izuki tried out his levitating quirk first and levitated Izuku high before sending magic, before sending multiple fire bullets at Izuku burning him. Mummy, stop him! It hurts! Please, big brother, stop! Don't hurt me, he yelled. But Izuki turned the flames even hotter as Izuku screamed out in pain. How dare you, you worthless and useless little scum! Dare call yourself my brother, you disgusting little bug! I'm not related to you! You weak freak, get that in your mind, Izuki says. Mommy, please help, Izuku cries out, but was instantly lifted above a cliff. Like my little prince said, you're no longer part of the Midoris, and I'm not related to weak trash like you, Inko says. I hate you, I'll be the strongest hero ever, and I'll make you beg for me to come back, but I won't, Izuku says, as Inko had enough and drops him, as he goes falling down the cliff. <laughs> strongest hero, as if trash like you can even be considered strong. My little Isuki will be the number one hero, not some worthless summoning hero like you. You worthless piece of trash, you can't even fight on your own, Inko says. Let's go Isuki, let's go home and celebrate you being our only child, Inko says. Deku was screaming as he was falling. Suddenly red markings light up over his body and a figure saves him. When Deku opens his eyes, he sees himself against the chest of an armored girl, a beautiful 
girl with blonde hair and blue skirt. I have answered your call, master. I am Savory, your servant. I throw your pen dragon. She says, I'm Izuku Mid. I mean, yes, Izuku. Are you my summon? Izuku asks. Yes, I'm your Saber class summon. Why are you crying, little one? And why are you by yourself? Where are your parents? Saber asks as Izuku started to cry more and more. My, my mummy and brother abandoned me. They hurt me and threw me off a cliff for not having a strong enough quirk, Izuku says. So they attacked their own child and abandoned you just for having an average superpower? How dare they? Don't they know that there was a time when humans never had any powers? For a human to act like that is, is disgusting. And don't they know that training can even make a mere human be able to compete with a heroic spirit? Saber says remembering how a past masters was able to take on heroic spirit aka Shirovi's Gilgamesh. Heroic spirits? Izuku asked as Saber explained that that was the type of summoning that he heard all about the Holy Grail and servants. So, in short, you're the reincarnation of the Holy Grail. You have immense magic and unlimited command seals and servants at your disposal. You also have true magic denial of nothingness which I suggest that you keep to yourself because people have fought for that kind of power. Now how about you go and summon a caster type servant and use magic to help build a place for you to stay and help you train magic, Saber asks. As Izuku channeled his magic into seals and Medea the caster type servant appeared. Master, I've answered your servant summoning request. I'm your caster class servant, Medea, caster says. I'm Izuku, can you build me a house please caster? Izuku asks. Of course, master, she says as magic enveloped the area and particles started to form until a castle was made in the middle of the forest. Master, I've also set up some bounded fields and other countermeasures to help and detect and keep others out, Costa says. Thank you, Izuku says. We now time skip to the beginning of the anime. In this time, Izuku has summoned many different servants and traded most of them. He had skills and lots of different weapons. He had good martial arts. He was really good in magic. And right now he had seven active servants who were Saber Toria Pendragon, Caster Medea, Raider Medusa, Archer which was Gilgamesh, Lancer Darumid, Berserker Hercules, Assassin which was King Hassan. Izuka had used Denial of Nothingness to recreate Saber's original sword, Caliban, and that was his main weapon of fighting. He had learned magic from Caster. One thing he also figured out was the servants that he had active, he had the powers and abilities of. For example, he could use Gilgamesh's Gates of Babylon if Gilgamesh was out, but they would be weak and slower than original Gilgamesh. Izuka had taken Saber's advice and decided to get himself back into human society before he went to UA. He had changed his name from Izuka Pendragon because he was disowned, and since he was really, really close with his female servants, mostly Atoria. When he was going to get his name registered, he said that he was just let out of the orphanage, and after doing that, Izuka then took a trip down the tunnel to clear his head about not being part of the Midorias, it still hurt him. Hey kid, nice body you have there. It'll be good to hide from that freak, a slimy villain says. Izuka having A-class strength easily could outmatch All Might and be four times stronger than him in his prime. So he pulls out his Caliban and slashes at the villain. At the, villain. the air pressure cutting the villain in half and sending the villain flying into the walls as well as knocking him out. As Izuka was about to leave, he heard laughter. Ha ha ha. Never fear, because I am here. Oh, I wasn't needed? And kid, why are you using your quirk without supervision? All Might says. Uh, what do you mean? I always use my quirk. I need it to survive, Izuku says. Not being in human society made him forget the rules of no, not being allowed to use quirk. Wait, you live by yourself? In a forest? In the death forest? All Might says. As Izuku shakes his head, making All Might sigh in relief, thinking that Izuku is joking. I live in the center of the forest with my su summons. Izuku says as several se seven servants appeared. Our master speaks the truth, Medusa says. If you want to take our master, then you'll have to go through us, Darumid says. Wait, wait. I was just asking. It's not like I could have done something about you living in a forest, All Might says, not wanting to fight the non-villains. Don't worry guys, go into your spirit form, Izuku says, as All Might was about to leave. Wait, All Might, how does one become a hero, Izuku asks. Oh, you can apply for a hero academy, All Might says. Uh, which one's the best one, Izuku says. Well, you eh, I'll be working there soon, All Might says. Uh, how do I apply for that, Izuku says. Well, kid, you see, I don't know how to break this to you, but other than recommendations, you have to go through school and have an exceptionally well record, All Might says. Well, can you recommend me? I want 
to prove to my family that I'm strong and not weak just because of my quirk, Izuku says. Or my size. He did not want to crush the child's dream, especially since the power he's seen. He wouldn't want to put that power in the path of villains. Kid, you know what? I'll give you an opportunity of the lifetime. If you could defeat me with your quirk, then I'll recommend you. However, if I beat you, you have to go to any hero academy that will accept you. I'll try to help you get in and promise to not be a villain, All Might says. Because if he had a quirk, he would have given it to the kid, but he'd already given it to young Kirishima. That's right, Red Riot will be getting all for one in this one. Okay, Berserker, do it! Attack! Izuku says, as All Might prepared to block the attack, but Hercules' single punch sent him flying high. Rider, take me to All Might! Izuku says, as Rider used the Pegasus to take Izuku to All Might. Cast to heal him quickly! Izuku says, seeing a knocked out and bleeding out All Might, which Costa did which annoyingly made Izuku heal All Might's wound. Young Izuku, I'm very happy to tell you that not only have you beaten me, but you've also healed a unhealable injury, and that is a debt I can never repay, All Might says. So, I will be recommending you and enrolling you into the academy myself, but you will have to do an entrance exam, unlike other recommendees, because people won't know who you are, All Might says. And by the way, kid, if your quirk's a summoning quirk, how do you have this kind of power? All Might asks. Well, my quirk evolved due to circumstances that made me ability that made me be able to use the abilities of my servant. Izuku says, Ha ha ha. Young Izuku, you'll do good. Now I must leave. Here are my recommendation papers. Take this to the UA office. All Might says, as Izuku went to the office and applied. Time skip, entrance exam day. Izuku easily aced the first exam with King Hassan taking answers from people and giving it to him. Now... It was the second exam. Izuku was standing when Lida tried to scold him for not paying attention apparently. You know, if you had listened, instead of being an impatient little prick like you are, President Mike would have gotten to the part where he told us about the fourth robot. And as for me not listening, how would you know? Go and then ask me any question, idiot, and I will answer it correctly. Don't push your insecurities on me, you rich, arrogant bastard. I know an even more arrogant man, and trust me when I say this, He's five times the golden king you'd ever be, Izuku says, shutting up leader. The gates then open up as Izuku and his servants make themselves known and rush out as Archer Emya had destroyed almost 75% of the robots using his tracing swords since Gilgamesh didn't want to be in the presence of Mongols. Castor used high damage spells to take out some bots while Hercules tore through the rest. Rider easily destroyed the bots with a whip and Hassan, even though he wasn't an attacking type, he still had way more strength than human creation because the work spirits were naturally stronger than anything in the world. After a few seconds, before anyone could enter, all of the bots were taken care of. People were shouting at Izuku for being greedy. If you are too weak and too slow to beat the bots, then you don't deserve to be in a prestigious school like UA, Izuku says, acting like Gilgamesh. I suddenly heard a giant bot come towards them. Izuku was about to destroy it using Hercules, but Izuku stopped. Let me take care of this, my servants. Izuku says, Kale burn! Izuku shouts as a golden beam erupts from the sword, destroying all 10 zero pointers, leaving everyone in awe, including the teachers. How utterly disappointing. The mongols that designed this test should be sacked for designing such a weak and easy test, Izuku says, with arrogance as the teacher led them away, saying he passes. But guys, that's all for today. Peace.